questions, ask away. Yes, Plant-based foods are expensive when you compare it to your typical public school budget, really any school budget. Have you thought about how are you going to introduce an increase in purchasing of foods to public schools? How do you increase that and still help them to stay within their target market? What we've also, I'm so glad you asked that question. What we've done um, with Newport News Public Schools is started, uh, the community garden project has been going on for quite some time. However, Sweat to Swag has also partnered with Juice Plus and Tower Gardens. And because a lot of those schools that I work with are Title I funded, we've actually worked in a way to write in their grant process, well, when they do their grant processes, to um, include the funding for uh, buying community gardens, which are the towers itself. So the children learn through STEM, they will learn how to um, balance the pH of these towers and grow their own produce. In turn, with the community garden, the school is now able to use what the children grow. Within four weeks' time, they're ready to harvest a lot of the greens and things that they plant. So it's it's just like it's, it's going back into it's it's a cycle. So with with that model, the schools are actually excited because that's the first thing they ask me when I go in, and they're like, okay, you know, this whole plant-based thing, this veganism, it's really expensive. Do we have to go to Whole Foods? And I said, hey. I grow a lot of my own food, and when I serve my clients for meal prep, a lot of that stuff comes from my own garden. So it's just a matter of having the technology in place, because we know soil planting, there's a lot of cultivating, which is good, um, motor skills, but with the tower gardens, I mean, it's set up for you, it's aeroponic, and it grows a lot quicker, so the students are able to experience that more, and we promote that in schools. Great job growing your revenues and uh, you know actually making sales. That's amazing. And uh, just curious, like what type of hip hop are you kind of implementing? And uh, you know maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, there are ten elements to hip hop culture. Don't know if you all knew that, but the tenth element actually, when we went to Harlem, we made a proclamation: is health and wellness should be number one, but it is number ten. Um, I work with children mostly. I do a lot of adults. Just basic fitness movements with dance, but with the kids, I always talk about the first four elements of hip hop. So we implement the DJ, because without the DJ, you don't have the music, you don't have the rhymes. And then of course, as a dancer, I have a dance degree from Old Dominion University. I teach breaking one-on-one. That is the first thing I start with, with my kids. So it's a lot of back spins and head spins, and I'm pushing 40. It gets a little hard sometimes, but um, <laughs> the kids, I love them, and we, we always start with that element. And then we go into the street knowledge and the entrepreneurialism in hip hop and, and how to communicate within the community. And we really cover all 10 elements. Um, and we're trying to make the 10th number one. So I always put in, um, I have like a little rap and I said, you know, boom bap with the kale wraps. And I'm like, hey, what are the kale wraps? It's this amazing thing. And then we do food samples and stuff like that. And then we dance. So that's, that's how I implement hip hop. Are you leveraging platforms I, I saw your market go to market plan with Facebook business page but have you thought about kind of leveraging platforms like SoundCloud which are very I mean there's probably like 17 artists in Atlanta right now that are like the next you know whoever is the next guy in Atlanta but you can get them for free and cheap right now and they'll market and cross promote with you and they'll share to their audience or have you looked at like musically which is a about 100 million active daily users, and it's all music, it's a bunch of lip singing, and it's the demo between probably 13 to 18, and its future is a little bit unknown, but it's a great place to grow awareness. Have you, have you started implementing a lot of your stuff into other platforms that might get you additional awareness? Def definitely, we, um, we're we very uh, familiar with SoundCloud, and actually some of my, my kids that I work with use music related too, so I've become through, through them teaching me, I, I've learned more about um, Musical.ly. But with SoundCloud, I have found uh, local DJs um, that put their stuff on SoundCloud, and so we'll do events together, and I'm always about promoting every element. There's someone that has something to offer within each element, and so when we put all of them together, especially if it's local community, then now we have this, this hub, and we're covering everything at once, and so everyone gets the full experience of like hip-hop culture and everything that has to offer, the positive aspects of it anyway. So yes, we have looked into that. Yes, so <clears throat> I wanted to say again that I think it's really awesome. The growth has been pretty steady with sales and things. Um, and I love the energy that you're bringing to the, this idea. 
Um, so if you could, can you sort of paint a picture of what Sweat and Sweat looks like in five years from now? Where is it going to be? What does it do? You know, like what's your vision, your big dream? Um, big dream for Sweat and Swag Fitness is to really put hip hop on a platform where it's an actual performing art. It's not just something that we do necessarily in the streets, because as I mentioned before, um, and, and it's not just pulling numbers, literally millions of people love and embrace hip hop in some form or another. It is an international global phenomenon. And it's what I've noticed in the United States, and particularly here, particularly here in the state of Virginia. Um, we. We love hip hop, but it's not, it's, it's more underground. And whereas in other countries, you have it like in your face. I mean, there are, and it started here in the United States, it started in New York. So I, I would like in five years, 10 years, 20 years, I plan to be here for a very long time. Um, I would love to see it as a performing art and actually seen in a positive light. And as far as sweat and swag is concerned, I, scalability, I want franchises, I want to branch out, I want everybody to feel, I want everybody to get their swag back, have that experience. So that's that's where we're moving um, towards that. We gotta get a brick and mortar first. <laughs> Is there a pop-up model for either your dance classes moving to the group format or your you know, food-based offerings that bridges the gap between your one-on-one -on -one and, and the group? least build your own space thing that you're you're, you're going for how, how have you explored that yes we actually do um for the meal preparation part we do soirees so i come in and it's literally a group of friends uh, i have a lot of female clients that come in and they say hey i've got a group of girlfriends that want to come in can you prep a menu for us and i literally have them i give them a list what they like to, or menu and they go, they get all the groceries, and I come into their home, and I prep their food for them and talk them through like healthier options and how to put, do meal planning, how it's sustainable so they don't necessarily. All right.